Welcome to my crazy world where we are now going to, guess what, what do you think we're going to do? We're going to package some wheat berry. This is our journey. Welcome to the Betancourt's Homestead. To be exact, we're going to package up durum wheat, which is semolina flour, which is the flour I used to make pasta, right? Sounds fun. This is it right here. Comes in a 50 pound bag. And because I can't use 50 pounds all in one day or even a week, I'm going to package it up in containers that will help me easily use it. Because it will probably take me over a year to go through all of this. But buying it in the 50, 50 pound bag is cheaper for me. And I like cheaper. And since it will keep for about 25 years properly stored, we're gonna go for it. Take out one of these bad puppies. I always go for at least nine milliliter thick. I like a thicker bag. Pill bugs have a harder time getting in and eating the thicker bag. This one actually has a zipper seam. Hmm, interesting. So you would seal right here, and then you would, and then when you opened it, you could zip it up. Kind of a nice feature. Not really needed in my world. My purchase also came with individually sealed 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers. I like using 3,000 cc's. These I like using for flour. We're just gonna have to suck out as much air as we possibly can out of this and make do because uh, I can't find 3,000 right now. It's pleated on the bottom, open up that pleat and put the bag in the bucket. Open the bag and put the bucket next to the bag. Now here's where you're gonna pay attention. You're gonna look at the grain as you're putting it in. You're gonna put your glasses on if you're me and you're gonna inspect it and you're gonna pick out things that you see that you don't like. Just go slow, it's all okay. And put it in the bucket. You also wanna inspect it for bugs. Sometimes you'll find them. I don't worry about the little bit of chaff that comes on it. I pretty much consider that to be um, fiber. Some people actually pick it out. Your five gallon bucket will hold about 35 pounds so you're not gonna get a whole bucket in the bag or bag in a bucket. Periodically pick the bag up and evenly distribute it. Once you have it full, test to make sure the lid will fit on it and then go find your oxygen absorbers because I forgot where I put them. Plug in the straight iron. Okay, now you're gonna work fast. You're gonna slip this. You're gonna put that little guy in. This is part two of sealing the Mylar bags. Stick with me, come on. We have our hair straightener and we have it set to high. We have set all of the air out of here and we have it set straight and we're taking our hair straightener. I technically have already done it, but the camera cut off and I wanna show you how I did it, my technique. So this is actually cool. You take it in the center part of the bag and you work your way out this way and you just keep doing that a couple times. And then you turn it around and you work in the center all the way out a couple times. And then you let it sit and you don't touch it, you don't push it, don't anything, so that it seals itself. And then, and you set it aside off to the side and tomorrow you're gonna look at it and make sure that you can start seeing the grains through it and that it sucked it all up. Make sure you label it. Make sure you label on the bag a little sticker. Make sure you label the bucket and make sure you label the lid. That way, when it comes down, if you lose the lid, it's still on the bucket. If you take it out of the bucket for some odd reason, it's still on the bag. Label and date. I'll be checking it tomorrow, so I'm not gonna really put the lid on tight, but that's what you do. That's it, that's it. It's so easy. Now, next, what am I gonna do with the rest of the bag? I don't have enough for a full five gallon bucket, so I'm not gonna waste a five gallon bucket. I have another use, which will be my first use items. Stick with me for part three, when we can dry grains in a mason jar. How would you store wheat berries 
if you didn't want to use a five gallon bucket, what would be the best way, especially if you can't lift five gallons, there's some people that can't lift it or it's really hard to carry for you, what would be the best way for you to do it? I'm actually gonna show you how I store wheat berries in half gallon mason jars. You can use any size mason jar, it's going to be the same for them all. Let's get started. First, you're gonna scoop out from your bag into your jars. It's easy. Make sure you watch for any bugs crawling around or any chaff, remove that if you want, and continue. You might find a little particle that you're kind of like, oh, just remember, this is growing in a field. It's like not processed. Unless you're growing it yourself, this is the most natural you're gonna find it. Well, I guess you could have it, you could get like the stalks. Keep going. Don't throw these out. There's a ton of uses for them. But I get one five gallon bucket and five and a half containers of Durham wheat. The partial container is going in my already open and using container. There you go. Grab your used lids and your rings and your food saver with all of those little accoutrements. This is where you do you and I'm doing me. I use, I use already used lids. These have already been pressure canned or water bath canned and I'm gonna use them for dry canning only. I don't wanna hear about it. I literally don't. I feel comfortable, this works for me. I get a second use out of my lids. Rule of thumb is they have to be totally clean, no mold, no nothing on them, and I continue with it. Hook up all the cords and the cord to the machine and then start canning it. They're all sealed, and as a rule, you're not supposed to put lids on. But for dry canning, I use lids. And I put them on kind of secure, just in case they come undone, which sometimes they do, more often than not with dry goods. Don't forget to label, that's important. In my book, there is no need to put this stuff in the freezer before you do this process. That is what the food saver does. It takes out all the oxygen and kills any living creature. So it saves you time. The oxygen absorbers, if you didn't have a food saver, you could use oxygen absorbers in its place. Just stick one in. Judy, I am so glad I confirmed that for you. I have so many questions about that. It's like, you tell us to take the rings off, but then you tell us to put the rings on. You're right. There is a difference between dry canning, water bath canning, and pressure canning. And the difference is, is that the dry canning can tend to come unsealed. So I always put the rings on it because technically if it comes unsealed, it's not going to spoil. It's dry goods, right? So I put, this, I put the rings on right here. I'll put the rings on for anybody that didn't know what a ring was. Not Judy, she knows. Judy knows. Judy knows. Train, 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 back on the tracks. I put the rings on my dry storage goods only because if it comes unsealed, it's not gonna matter and it's not gonna compromise. And it actually is going to keep the seal going so that bugs can't get in it. So that is exactly why I do that. And it has saved me a lot of bacon. I started doing it after my first year when I started realizing, oh, every once in a while, things come unsealed. Hmm. And I reuse the canning lids. <laughs> It's a perfect use for old canning lids, as long as they're clean and not moldy, right? You gotta cover everything. <laughs> thanks for commenting and thanks for watching. Oh, I'm in a goofy mood. My ADHD is like overboard today. Back to work. Dream picks, yes. You can store rice, beans, legumes, which are beans, um, the wheat berries, all kinds of things, pastas. My only caveat is, is that brown rice has a lot of oils in it. Things that have a lot of oils in them, they don't last as long. Wheat flour doesn't last very long because once you crack the berry, it starts to, te te to blah, 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 blah. it starts to deteriorate. So that's why I store my berries whole in the kernel without before I crack them and I crack them when I mill them. And it keeps my products good for 25 years, although I'm only in my 12th, 13th year of doing this. It's just genius and revolutionizes how many times I actually have to leave the land to go shopping. Like I know you can't eat flour, but if you could eat almond flour, oh, and people do spelt. Do you do, can you eat spelt flour? Because you can, you can put spelt grains in here. Um, Kamut grains, all kinds of grains that you could grind yourself, and they're good for, what, 20, 25 years? It's just mind-boggling when you start taking control of your own food, right? It's just mind-boggling, and I love it. It's like a challenge, and I'm up for 
send me in, coach. Thanks for asking the question. I'm a little goofy today. It's okay. I haven't had enough coffee to keep my ADHD in check. It's okay. It's working. I should probably go make a cup of pot of coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm just getting goofier. Nah, let's just let it fly. I'll be entertainment for you guys.